In 2009, Notch left his job and started Minecraft, something which has since become the best-selling video game of all time. In 2012, he announced he was working on a new project, Zero Times 10 C, a game which was set in a parallel universe where the space race never ended. Despite many details of the game coming out, including its soundtrack, we sadly never got a playable version of this game and so have just a few screenshots to show us what it would have looked like. Now we have Notch mentioning that he thinks Minecraft is a dead game and working on a third project in this vein. This one is called Levers and Chests and boy does it use a lot of bricks by the way, but today I want to share everything we know about this project in today's video. With that said, let's start with a little bit of background. Notch obviously does not work at Mojang anymore. If you're not familiar with the history. Although he started the game and led it through much of its success, he sold the company to Microsoft in 2014 and hasn't exactly been happy about what direction they've taken the game in. And so if we want to have an idea at exactly the sort of game Notch won't be developing, it's worth taking a look at his relationship with Minecraft post the sale of that game because he did say in 2017 that he was turning in his grave and the reason for this was an attempt to be discreet about his opinion of an in-game currency coming to Minecraft. This was with the introduction of Minecoins and it's crazy to say that was seven years ago now, but interestingly he kind of doubled down on this stance with a quote tweet of the Sonic the Hedgehog Minecraft trailer saying he's not even going to apologize for this one and that he's not one to speak ill of the dead, but yeah, Minecraft is a little dead. This is interesting because this combined with the fact that I could put simply as Notch has a section of his Wikipedia page called Controversies that's not a short section, there's lots of things in there, uh, led to Minecraft not only removing references to him from the credits, but also specifically not inviting him to the 10 year anniversary of the game. This is the interesting past that you need to see to understand Notch's new game before getting a glimpse into the present because on March the 17th this year we had Notch just tweet an image with no context whatsoever and honestly my first thought was wow why are we in the inside of a brain but then he posted a second image of the same scene saying this was in full resolution for resolution enjoyers and then a third one which had moodier lighting but harder to see on Twitter. I think it's very clear to see that this is some form of dungeon crawling based game and even wilder than that is the fact that even though it has some smoothed edges, it is very clearly a cube based one and wow what is that notch working on a new cube based game? This is something which is incredible to see and honestly my gut instinct after 0x10c that was that notch was going to work on something and then quickly get bored and move on to something else. However a few days later we actually did see that he was working on deferred lighting which he said was done but you know shadows they were going to come soon and this is a very beautiful image of a very different scene from the same game but later that very same day he did actually finish the shadows and it looks like this. Wow, isn't this actually incredible? The answer in my opinion is yes and this raises the question of why now? Why 10 years after the sale of Minecraft? It almost sounds as though there was a 10 year non-compete for making a blocky game that could compete with Minecraft which has just expired because it's now been 10 years since that sale. However, I do think that something that makes this seem less likely is not trying to explain the direction of this game because it immediately looks like it's some form of voxel style build. However, he says the current direction that he's pushing the project in is a looter, shooter, but with unique swords and capes instead of unique weapons and shields. Borderlands with D20s, if you will. A little bit of D&D &D influence in there. He then replies that it was pointed out to him that this was Diablo, and he replies, yeah, but like in first person? Okay, fine, I suppose Diablo is an inspiration now. And it's interesting because, first of all, this is another piece of proof that Notch uses a lot of Twitter and actually re reads his responses. Uh, almost every single source from this video came from Twitter, because that is where Notch seems to post the most. And it's also where he seems most open to posting almost anything such as, you know what, if I switch the engine over to being tile based a la Ultima Underworld, I could do super cheap ray tracing for the shadows, heck, I could even have multiple blocks per tile, and oh no, that's just voxels again, and the funny thing about oh no, that's just voxels again, you know, he's worried about making basically another voxel game, is that he basically ended up saying, okay, we're going to voxels, because a few days later he says he has to render 65,000 mostly overlapping full size voxel arcvilles before my monster computer started dipping below 100 FPS. I think voxels are a go and that is indeed him confirming that this is going to be a voxel game. He wants to test it on mortal hardware because it's running in WebGL it sounds like. Uh, but interestingly he then says FYI it doesn't need to all be flat showing this right here. It, As you can see it's voxels but they're voxels that can all be slightly offset from each other. This is crazy tech in the world of Minecraft if you will. And then there's this image right here showing voxels that aren't necessarily offset but they have some bars inside of there too. This actually looks incredible. This shot 
shot right here tell, makes me feel like I'm crawling around in Minecraft, but if you see it as you being a much smaller person, makes you feel like it is almost going to be a Doom style game with a little bit of a D and D influence, something which I think is beyond fascinating. This is where the question kind of comes in: Is what Notch is going to do right now going to become the next big thing? Is this going to become a Minecraft style project? I think that is why there is always an interest behind what he does, and I think that's always going to be the big question to answer. So I want to make sure we do it. But I think something that might help answer that is the fact that Notch has shared a lot of progress even since then, with just the last couple of weeks having him sharing this, finish the conversion to pure voxels, now I go celebrate Easter or something I guess, that's right, he's coding and making a slightly prettier version of the game for Easter, and then a few days later he's even added some monsters, these are actually just, uh, you know, temporary placeholders from Doom it looks like, literally that is a Doom style enemy, but then you can see that a step even further is deferred local light sources, rendered as inside out cubes of course, which is <laughs> beyond bizarre, lots and lots of interesting game development stuff happened here, but the end result is something that looks like this, which has in the top left right there, levers and chests pre-alpha, which confirms that this isn't just a fun programming project, this is something he intends to take the full course into being some form of playable game. And it's funny that I mention that, because almost always when programmers get really deep into making games, they work on the technical side first and the game is kind of secondary, and you can see that with this image right here showing 144 FPS, but interestingly in this very last image he's posted of levers and chests pre-alpha, it's at 240, so you can see performance was a huge incentive and part of developing this game, but yeah, there is some more stuff we need to talk about regarding this, but I think one of the first and most important bits is, is this really going to happen now? Like I said earlier, there is this almost skepticism that I think you should have when someone announces a new creative project. A big part of the desire to release something is kind of removed when you share it with people live. I find this is my experience at least, that whenever I'm working on something, whether it's as small as a book or big as a game, that telling people about it almost fulfills some of the creative urge you actually need to create the thing, and that is why when I saw not say that he's got some upcoming social obligations that will severely cut into his development time for up to a month. Honestly, he'd prefer not to, but okay, he'll be part of the tribe. I immediately started thinking, okay, well, this might go away for a while now, and that's why I decided to make this video, but then while I've been making it, it seems as though it's gone the opposite way, because he's still actively thinking about what he can do with the game, saying that he could start with one type of movement for the game, and then later on release a sequel of the other type, but that dramatically changed gameplay mid-series. What is this? Risk of Rain? And just the fact that he's making jokes and actively thinking about it while away somewhere socializing, to me is what makes me think this is going to be some major hyper-focused project that you actually might be able to play, and so then that raises the big question, we know what Levers and Chests is, it's going to be a game that involves loot, it's going to have all of these things, but now comes the big question of is this going to be something that can even be compared to Minecraft if you will? Being a creative with a very successful project is sometimes as much of a curse as it is a blessing. Sure, you might have something which people know you for and a big influx of fame and maybe even cash, definitely cash in Notch's case, however you also have the huge expectations of what will come next. This means that you can't just randomly experiment and make some good and some bad things, but now you have to make things which are objectively going to be good, and sometimes just that knowledge and that expectation can lead to the failure of a project all by itself. Take 0 times 10 c for example, there was a huge amount of work poured into that, but Notch knew to ever release it, it had to be at a certain level of quality, and so how can it ever be that a game worked on by a single person will ever come anywhere close to Minecraft? It just isn't possible, because people aren't remembering Minecraft as the hacky slashy game that took a few months to put together from 2009. People will be comparing it to the game from now, or at the very least from 2014, or at the very least if they're being more generous than that, Minecraft 1.0 with two years of development with multiple people, and so without a studio, whatever comes next, levers and chests, will never be as good as what came in the past, which is why it's a shame that there is obviously no studio behind Notch, except wait a minute, let me introduce you to something called BitShift Entertainment. This is something Notch decided to share earlier this month, and this is a brand new game studio, or I guess I should say it is actually a game studio from 2015 that has been rebranded recently, and this is going to be one of Notch's brand new projects. As you can see, it is not just a personal passion for game development, but also a passion for creating a company that can develop those same games. In the same way that before Minecraft, there were many personal projects for Notch, Ruby Dung is quite a famous one, uh, but there are many other personal projects, but it was Minecraft and the backing of a team that made that happen. Is the same thing going to happen with Levers and Chests? Well, I mean, if I'm going to answer that question honestly, the cynical part of me says no, because most startups fail in the first five years, and most video games developed have sold somewhere between 
0 and 10 copies. Entertainment is a very hard field to break into because it's very hard to make something good enough to not only be worth buying in its own right, but be worth sharing with people via social media and however else you want to get out there. Without huge advertising budgets, it's hard to get people to know your game unless, let's just say hypothetically, you were a giant figure that was loved by a large number of people, but also hated by a huge number of others. I don't know why they'd hate you, it's nothing to do with that huge controversy section of your Wikipedia page, but let's say there was a huge number of people that were following you, either hoping for your success or your failure, but in either case, definitely hoping. Let's say you had millions of followers across your social platforms, and let's say that you had experience with actually creating one of the most successful games of all time, and even finding people to develop it while you weren't personally doing so, well, I think that would be a recipe for success, and so is that what Levers and Chests has behind it? I think the answer certainly could be yes, but I don't think it's going to depend on anything to do with just the feelings and the vibes, but instead it's going to be about how much love, time, and attention is actually put into this game between now and its release, and also, perhaps far more importantly, if there ever is going to be a release. Is there a great track record from Notch on that? That's the question you have to answer, and although at this point a lot of people are going to take this as a like, well, I, you know, if you read the comments you'll see a lot of this I imagine, are people saying, I want him to fail because I have these opinions about the person, and other people are going to say, I think it's going to go really well because I like that one game he played, but I think this is an important thing we need to do about separating personalities from physical things in the world. Sure, we are all humans and we're all doing things, but rather than trying to judge every single person on stuff, how about we try to judge the world as objectively as it can be, minus the people that are in it. You know, bad people can make good things, and good people, most importantly, can make bad things, and uh, yeah, it's important to know, or maybe it's just going to make some people mad. All I know is I hope that you enjoyed me teaching you about the latest in Minecraft news anyway. Uh, please do like this video if you did like it, share if you really liked it, and consider subscribing to see more Minecraft news, because I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.